continuing with probability this week, uh, this time looking at a different type of diagram. So our title today is going to be tree diagrams. Um, they don't really look much like trees, um, but they're called tree diagrams and they're something which will almost certainly be on uh, the GCSE paper. Um, they really, really uh, like this topic. Um, they're a nice way for us to be able to represent um, probabilities and for us to work out the probability of two different things happening at the same time. Um, so let's start, um, we need a, a scenario. Um, so let's start with, let's pretend we've got um, just a normal coin. So I've got, uh, I've got a coin, I don't know how you want to represent that. Um, I'll just put a pound sign on it. So I've got a normal coin. Uh, and then I'm also going to have a spinner. So you might want to get a circle to draw around. So this is a bit neater. Uh, and I'm going to split my, split my spinner into four uh, equal sections. So I like quarter it like that. Um, now whether you want to actually use colour at this point or whether you want to uh, just write the colour in, it doesn't matter. Let's see if I've got enough colours to try and uh, colour. So I'm going to have a... Um, a purple section. Um, you could just write purple. Um, oh, my purple pen's not going to work. Hmm, let me scribble on something. Oh, no, that didn't go to plan. Right, I'll have a pink section instead. Um, and I'll have um, two black sections and a white section. So I've got a pink, two black, and a white. Um, right, so we're going to toss the coin and we're going to spin the spinner and we're going to see uh, what we get. So we know that when we toss a coin there's two outcomes. I could get a head or I could get a tail. So we represent that by kind of the first set of branches in my tree diagram. So somewhere down your page a little bit, I need you to draw me two branches, one going up like that and one going down like that. So this is kind of our starting point and this is symbolising that I've got two options. I'm either going to get a head or I'm going to get a tail. So I'm just going to write at the end of this branch head and I'm going to write at the end of this branch tail. So that's representing the two options that I've got to start with. So let's say I got a head. So now I'm here. Well, now I'm going to spin my spinner. And I've got three options, haven't I? I could get a black, I could get a pink, or I could get a white. So coming off from here, I need to have three branches because there's three options for the next thing. Okay, so I could get, um, what could I get? I could get a pink. I could get a black or I could get a white. Okay, so this was this was the coin, this was option one. So above this first set of branches, let's write coin. So these branches belong to the coin and these branches belong to the spinner. Okay, right, now let's have a look. Imagine we'd got a tail on our coin and then I spin the spinner. Well, I've still got three options, haven't I, for my spinner. I'm still going to either get pink, black, or white. This isn't going so well, is it? Pink, black, or white. So they're my three options again. So I either, imagine walking along it. You either get a head or a tail. So you're either going to walk along here or you're going to walk along here. So let's pretend I got a tail. So I walk along here. So now I'm stood here. Now you spin your spinner, so you're either going to get a pink, a black, or a white. So if you got a white, you'd walk along there. The way we make this a little bit harder, uh, or in other words, in order to get more marks, we have to add the probabilities onto the branches of this tree diagram. So let's think about a coin. Let's pretend it's just a perfectly fair coin. It's not biased. So we think we need to think about the probability of getting a head, or the probability of getting a tail. And we're going to be working in fractions for this. So the probability of getting a head, well, that's a half, isn't it? There's two options, a head or a tail, and we want one of them. 
Remember, that's how we build probability. So the number on the bottom is the number of options, and the number of top it, on the top is how many of them we want. And again, for a tail, it's going to be a half. And we write those probabilities on the branches like that. Right, now let's have a look at the spinner. So how many sections are there? So like in the coin, we said how many options were there? Well, there was head or tail. How many sections has my spinner got? Well, my spinner has got four sections. So we know that all of our fractions are going to have a four on the bottom because there's four options, there's four sections. Right, how about pink? How many of the sections are pink? One. So I'm going to have one out of four. That's the probability of getting a pink, isn't it? There's four sections and one of them is pink. So there's four sections, that goes on the bottom, and one of them is pink. How about black? Well, there's four sections, so that four's on the bottom, two of them are black. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, oh, we could simplify that fraction. In fact, this is the only time in maths that I tell you not to bother for now. We're going to leave it like that, and then we might simplify our answer right at the very end. But for now, we're going to leave it like that. It just makes things a little bit easier later on. And then how about white? Well, there's four sections, so four's on the bottom, and one of them is white. And again here, I've got one pink section, two black sections, and one white section. Okay, so that's my completed tree diagram. They might ask us some questions about it. So they might say, for example, what's the probability of getting a head and a pink? Or what's the probability of getting a tail and a black. So let's try and have a look at one of those questions. You might remember that I said we use a capital P and then a curly bracket. This represents the probability. So that P stands for the probability. It just saves us having to write out that long word. So the, let's, what should we go for? Let's ask what's the probability of getting a head and a black on the spinner? So that means probability of getting a head and a black. Now, this is when our tree diagram comes in really, really useful because we just need to remember one rule for this tree diagram. If we walk along the branches, we multiply. And that's the rule you've got to remember. So let's start at the beginning. Now, what do we want? We want a head. So we walk along the head, uh, the head branch, which has got a half on it. So the first fraction is going to be a half. Right, now we're here. And now we want black. So we're going to walk along the black branch, which has got 2 over 4. And the only rule is that when we go along the branches, we multiply. So that's a half from this branch times multiplied by whatever was on the black, because I wanted a head and then black. Now, remember, to multiply fractions, it's dead easy. We multiply the top numbers, so 1 times 2, and we multiply the bottom numbers, 2 times 4, which is 8. And now I can simplify that, can't I? I can divide the top by 2, and I can divide the bottom by 2, which gives me 1 over 4. So that's my answer. So let's just write down that rule. We multiply along the branches. Now, if you can remember that rule, um, then uh, you'll be absolutely fine in tree diagrams. So you multiply along the branches. Okay, so that is all you need to have a go. I am going to do one more example, but feel free to stop there if you'd like to. Um, there's only one worksheet this week, which I'd like you to submit. Um, so it's just called Worksheet 1. Um, but it, it is the one that I'd like you to submit. But there's only one this week. You've worked really, really hard. Um, so it's just, just one. If you'd like to watch another example or make some more notes in your book, I am going to do one more example now. Okay, but feel free to stop. I won't be offended. Right, I'm going to turn over. Uh, and we're just going to do one more, really, really similar. But this time, instead of a coin and a spinner, I'm going to have um, two buckets with... Uh, buttons or balls or sweets or something in. So I'm going to have two buckets like that. Right, and in the first one, I'm going to have two black balls and a white ball. And in this bucket, I'm going to have three black balls and two white balls like that. 
and they're miraculously floating, but that's okay. Right, so let's call this bucket one, uh, and we're going to call this bucket two. And all we're going to do is we're going to pick a ball out of bucket one, and then we're going to pick a ball out of bucket two. Okay, so um, let's go for, um, well, start at the beginning. Well, how many options are there for bucket one? Well, I'm either going to get a black or a white, aren't I? They're, they're the two options for bucket one. I'm either going to get a black or I'm going to get a white. So let's write black and white. Right, now let's look at bucket two. What are my options? Well, again, I could get a black or I could get a white. They're the only two options from bucket two. I could get a black or a white. Um, and again, if I picked a white out of bucket one, and now I'm going to go into bucket two, I could get a black or a white. So I could get a black or a white. Right, let's label it. So this is bucket one, and this is bucket two, okay? Right, let's put some fractions onto our tree diagram. What's the probability of getting a black out of bucket one? You need to ask yourself two questions. How many balls are there? Well, there's three, so that goes on the bottom. And how many of them are what we want? Well, we're on the black branch, so we're looking at the black, and there's two blacks. And then how about the white? So there's three balls in total. How many of them are white? One. So that's bucket one sorted. Now we're looking at bucket two. So I've picked a black one out of bucket one, and now I'm looking at bucket two. Well, what's the probability of getting a black? Well, there's three black balls, and there's five in total. Or how about a white? Well, there's two white balls and five in total. Or here, uh, same thing, isn't it? Here, if I picked a white one out of the first bucket, it doesn't affect what happens with the second bucket. So there's three black balls out of five, and there's two white balls out of five in bucket two. And then they could ask us for things like, what's the probability of getting a white and then a black? So what's the probability of getting a white and then a black? So we want a white one first. So I walk along my white branch, which is one over three. And remember, my only rule is that when I'm walking along the branches, I multiply. So I've walked along the white branch, and now I'm going to multiply it by, well, what do I want now? I want a black. So I'm going to walk along the black branch, which is 3 over 5, and I'm multiplying them. Right, multiply the top numbers. 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 5 is 15, and then simplify if you can. I can divide the top by 3 and I can divide the bottom by three. Okay, so that's it for tree diagrams. Um, so as I said, there's one worksheet this week that I'd like you to have a go at and I'd like you to submit it, please. So either email it to me or um, send me a, a photo on show my homework. Um, any problems, send me a message or get your parents to send me a message or whatever uh, and I'm more than happy to help. Um, Thank you so much for all the work you've sent in so far and I look forward to receiving your tree diagrams work.